Welcome back to Living 808. Iolani Palace hosts an ongoing lecture series, Na Mo'olelo, about local arts and culture. BYU professor and author Dr. Isaiah Walker is next up in the lineup this weekend, and it's all about surfing, something that locals love. Uh, welcome to Living 808. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, I want to ask you what inspired you to write this book, Waves of Resistance. Yeah, so I wrote this book. Um, actually, it's a culmination of, of a PhD dissertation at UC Santa Barbara, where I finished school. But also growing up as a kid in Hilo, as a surfer, I noticed that social hierarchies in the water were so kind of dramatically different than on land. And I wanted to tell a history, a Hawaiian history, that um, would intrigue people from a little different perspective. So by, it's really a Hawaiian history book um, that uses surfing and surfers as the vehicle for telling that story. That's amazing that people who don't have the good fortune to be out in the lineup and surfing to understand, but to be able to present that as a research project, essentially. Yeah, and that was kind of my goal, was to kind of tell stories and, and provide a voice for people that may have been voiceless in the past. Now, during the research, I know a lot goes into a dissertation. Uh, what were some of the interesting aspects that you discovered? Um, one of the things I was uh, looking in the archives and I found that um, the same individuals who were involved with the overthrow of the Queen of Hawaii uh, were eventually became surfers and and they formed this club that went up head to head against this other club called the Huinalu Club. Wow. So you had Prince Guhio, Duke Hanamoku, and these surfers uh, in Waikiki, and then you had this same other group of people. It was essentially the same battle that took place on land that <laughs> uh, ended up in the ocean, but the outcome was quite different. So. It was, Pretty fascinating to me. Some things don't change. The turf battle, you still hear about that, even with stand up paddlers and different people getting into the lineups, right? Now, as far as a lecture series, how do you present this? It's a whole book, it's a lot of passion work that goes into. How do you go about presenting that message? Yeah, it's hard, especially like my great grandmother is from Portugal, and being a Portuguese, it's hard to not <laughs> talk too much, but um, there's so much to tell. And well, I guess what, the lecture series is pretty. Uh, informal. It's. I mean, it's 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 interactive, and so we'll just see. It depends on who's there and how it goes. But but mostly, it's telling the history of um, because we are celebrating or recognizing 127 years uh, since the overthrow, and so I'll be talking about that time period quite a bit. What was going on then? Because surfing actually has a like a renaissance or there's a rebirth during that same time period, and one of the contentions in my book is that. It wasn't by coincidence that the, that Hawaiians found refuge as the ocean as a kind of pu'uhonua or sanctuary during difficult times. Uh, particularly, you see some drama on land, and the ocean becomes kind of a refuge for a lot of Hawaiians who are surfing at that time. Oh, very interesting. Uh, tell people when and where you're going to be speaking. Yeah, so I'll be speaking um, at Iolani Palace, and it's on January 12th, this coming Sunday. It's at 3 o'clock, and it's free and open to the public. Um, it's on Kamaina Sunday, so you also can tour the palace. Uh, Wonderful if someone hasn't done it. You learn fascinating yeah. history there as well. For sure. About the Ali'i. Any upcoming projects for you? Uh, yeah, I've been doing some research about my hometown, Hilo. Mm. Uh, in the past, um, people have kind of erroneously suggested that surfing died out in Hawaii. But one of the things that I think is very fascinating is that surfing is one of those cultural traditions in Hawaii that really hasn't really died out. Um, and in Hilo, we find that it was a mecca of surfing in the late 1800s. Hmm. And there's some new photographs that have come out and also some, some writings in Hawaiian language newspapers and elsewhere that show that Hilo was actually a very thriving surfing community in the late 1800s, not just Waikiki and Duke Hanamoku, but there are other Hawaiians who are doing it. So I've been spending some time looking at um, that history of surfing there. Well, we're looking for the sequel to this, too. And I have one more question, because since surfing is going to, for the first time, be in the Olympics, as a surfer and a professor, how do you feel about this momentous occasion? Um, it's exciting, for sure. Um, it's also, in some ways, a little disheartening because the surfing world has recognized Hawaii as kind of an independent uh, nation uh, in the surfing world. So, for example, Chris Moore recently won her fourth world title, yes. and she was doing it for Hawaii. Uh, but the Olympics... Um, uh, She'll be surfing for the United States, which is interesting. So there's only four surfers from the United States, and half of them are from Hawaii. So it is cool to see Hawaii being represented in the Olympics. All right. Well, you can see Dr. Walker Sunday at 3 p.m. Thanks so much for coming Thank in you. and sharing your insights here on the Olympics. Hello.